Welcome to chapter one, section one of the New World Beginnings. We're uh, covering 33,000 before the common era or before Christ. Uh, to 1769 of the common era or AD, which means Anno Domini in Latin, which means the year of our Lord. Got a nice picture of Columbus coming ashore. What an idiot. We'll talk about why he's an idiot later in the chapter. Uh, the shaping of North America, uh, a little bit of uh, geology here. The Appalachians, the old mountains of the east, were actually formed 250 million years ago through plate tectonics, and they were slowly eroded over the years through wind and water erosion and all that good stuff in the water cycle. And you science people are probably just going, wee. The Rocky Mountains, which we all know are the best since we live in them, uh, and other ranges of the west are, are relatively new. They are formed 135 to 25 million years ago, so we got the young mountains. We're hip, we're cool. Uh, maybe not hipsters, not wearing beards, you know, and uh, drinking a lot of coffee, listening to indie rock and all that stuff, you know, basically being a hipster. Uh, we're, we're cooler than that. Uh, the continent was anchored 10 million years ago by the Canadian Shield. Kind of stopped it from moving as much, uh, which is around Hudson Bay. And then we have the Great Ice Age, 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, which is, uh, it was cold. And there was a lot of woolly mammoths and other species and some movies that came out about it with Sid the Sloth and stuff like that. I don't really into those. Uh, I'm too old, I guess. Go Star Wars. The uh, glacial melting and movement shaped the continent. The continent left the Great Lakes there. A uh, substantial amount of freshwater lakes in, in Canada as well, and just shaped the overall geography of really central uh, North America. So it formed the Great Lakes, the Missouri, Mississippi, and Ohio River system, and Lake Bonneville areas to the west, which is really cool if you want to go to the sand dunes and go really, really fast. Um, the earliest people reached the continent about 35,000 years ago via the land bridge, the Bering Strait. You guys probably learned this a long, long time ago. Uh, because of the ice age, the, the sea levels dropped, which we're doing the opposite. We're going to raise them and flood California and Louisiana. Sorry. Um, you know, move to the mountains, maybe, and, and, and it'll be safe. Maybe, maybe Arizona and Nevada will be oceanfront someday. So let's maybe fix global warming. I don't know. Uh, they poss possibly came in crude boats. So there is some evidence now that they maybe didn't just walk, that maybe they, they got on a boat and... They were wakeboarding, you know, coming to America. Uh, most people accept that it was a land bridge that brought that there. They followed evidence of, you know, artifacts from people, uh, even, you know, bone evidence and, and things that they've left behind using the Bering Strait. So we were populated by a bunch of Russians. Not really Russia, just kidding. Uh, they people crossed for 250 centuries, which is a long time, uh, about as long as this class seems to be going. Uh, and then spread out all the way to the tip of South America through generational migrations. And with every generation that moved a little further west, or excuse me, south and east and spread out, they adapted and their culture changed and they had new ways of living, which made their language change, which eventually made all these different cultures uh, that didn't even recognize maybe their ancestors. Uh, and peopling the Americans... Uh, by 1492, their estimates are that there was 54 million people who lived in the Americas. So we're talking North America, Central America, South America. Here in the United States, we've kind of monopolized the term Americans. We think well, we're Americans, yeah. But actually, it applies to anyone in North America, Central America, South America. Um, so they get really annoyed and like, hey, we're Americans. Get out. And they're like, so are we. Leave us alone. Uh, they lived in countless tribes. Um, Apparently, nobody took the time to count them up. There might be a dissertation for somebody someday. Uh, with an estimated 2,000 languages. You know, we have a hard time with two around here. And they had 2,000, so stop complaining. Uh, they, some of them formed great civilizations. You have the Inca in Peru, uh, which were known for their llamas and their, um, their substantial road systems. Um, you have the Mayans in Central America near Guatemala and Mexico with their pyramids and all that. And the bloody Aztecs who like to just kill people and throw them down, cut their hearts up and throw them down in temples. Uh, centralized in Mexico. Uh, human sacrifices. Supposedly there was 5,000 done in one day. I'm sure there's a History Channel show about that. I don't think I briefly remember watching it, but I was probably falling asleep because I was too tired. Um, they all cultivated maize or corn. Oh, get that corn out of my face. Uh, very delicious stuff. Um, good, good stuff. 
um, the, the kind of just changed the world. The corn's a huge product. Um, all, you know, had similarities. Um, none of them actually invented the wheel, except for little toys. None of them ever domesticated large animals, except dogs, and so they didn't, uh, they weren't prone, to, you know, to live around diseases. Uh, if you guys took world history, you knew this from guns, germs, and steel, and so that kind of was why they were so behind, is they didn't have a bunch of cows. <clears throat> they were very talented in math and astronomy, especially the Maya, who predicted the world would come to an end in 2012. Turns out they were wrong. It just turned out to be a really bad movie, which you shouldn't watch. So, moving on. Uh, you can see here a little little bit of chart here. You have the Maya, the Aztec, and the Inca, the Maya, cities and farm economy. They didn't have a capital city, although uh, Machu Picchu is a really cool temple to go see. They use hieroglyphic writing. Uh, religion was big, pyramids, temples, calendar, astronomy. Um, they also communicated through knotted ropes. Um, yeah, it works well, like a baton. Uh, the Aztec cities, farm economy, many a warrior decided they enslaved other neighbors. Their capital is Tenochtitlan. Uh, the legend was that they knew where to build that because they were looking for a new place and they saw in the lake there was an island, there was an eagle on a cactus and had a snake in its beak and it was clawing and they're like, dude, that's awesome, let's build a, you know, build a city here. Which is the location of Mexico City and it's the Mexican flag now. They use glyphs for writing and they're big into religion and pyramids and temples and calendars and apocalypto, wait, that's a movie. Um, and then you have the Inca, um, who... Had cities, farm economy, large army, huge empire. Cusco was their their capital. Let me go back. The Maya didn't do Machu Picchu or the rewritten or the uh, the uh, rope. Sorry, screwed up. That's the Inca. It's late and I'm tired. Uh, they didn't have uh, written language. They kept records with quipus, which were the yeah, they had the knotted rope things. Uh, religion was important. Temples. They had ten thousand miles of stone road, which is really impressive because it was up in the Andes and the elevation was tough. So here's a picture of Machu Picchu, here's Chichen Itza here on the top right, which is the Maya and the Aztecs, getting ready to cut some people's hearts off. So sorry about mixing up Aztecs and Mayas, like I said, it's late. So the earliest Americans, corn, uh, corn transformed nomadic hunters into settled agricultural villages, much like the agricultural revolution in the Middle East did. Uh, people just sat around and you know, talked about stuff and, and prayed to the corn god, Great Corn Holio was the exact name, I, I believe. Um, it allowed civilization to start. With that, they needed record keeping, um, and so they came up with writing systems, and then they worshipped, and you know, they weren't just always on the run trying to kill stuff, so they could think and, and, and improve society and fix up your house a little bit instead of always moving it around, which is like the original mobile home. They formed nation states, were formed in Mexico, the Aztecs. Uh, you also have some in North America, not as great, not as grand of civilization, but you have the mound builders in Ohio. Uh, which is kind of mysterious, they have a great serpent mound and all that stuff. The Mississippians uh, and the Anasazi form large cities. And you have a picture here of Mesa Verde, uh, or Green Table if you speak English or not Spanish very well, um, which is uh, in southwestern Colorado. It's a national park, very popular. Um, you know, Mesa Verde was abandoned suddenly, and there's a bit of mystery about the Anasazi, which most likely they starved out because of climate change. There's another one called Cahokia, which is modern day Illinois, uh, which is the largest city in present day United States at the time. There was nearly 5,000 people, which is still bigger than silt. So take that silt. Uh, they also practiced the three sister farming, which is really fun. You grow your corn, it goes up, and then in the bottom you have uh, you know the squash, you know, and it kind of protects everything, and then the beans wrapped around the corn socks, and so you had the three sisters: the corn, the squash, and the beans, which is a lot of carbs. Uh, and not a lot of protein, so eventually they would go trade uh, with the hunters on the plains who killed the buffalo because they needed protein and the hunters needed some carbohydrates for a balanced diet. And you thought it was just about, you know, looking good in a swimsuit. You need all of that stuff to live. Um, so they traded protein with the plains Indians. Uh, I myself, I tried three sister farming in, in my garden here at the Rancho Harvito. Uh, didn't do well. Apparently had to water it, I don't know. Uh, I think we got a couple squash, the corn didn't do anything, and, and beans, they never even came up. But cool, cool idea. Um, you know, it kind of, they all three worked together in harmony, uh, um, protected each other and all that stuff. They were symbiotic species. 
So here's a little map here, a little mappy poo. Uh, you have the Maya down below and Chichen Itza and Guatemala and Belize and places like that in Mexico. Uh, the Aztec, the Old Mac, which is an older civilization. The Anasazi and the Hohokam, which is another one in you know, the Four Corners region. And you have the Mississippians who built the mounds and, and Cahokia. Uh, and also the Adin and the Hopo also did some of the mound building as well. Uh, this Three Sister Diet, which maybe that's the new fad, that's the new hip diet. If you want to make a million dollars instead of the Atkins or the Bacon Diet, do the Three Sister Diet. It sounds cool. Maybe Oprah will endorse it. Uh, in the southeast, you have some dense population, some tribes that really grew. The Creek, the Choctaw, and the Cherokee, who would eventually become the um, the, the five civilized tribes with the, uh, in addition to the Seminoles and one other that slipped my mind. You have the Iroquois. The Iroquois in the northeast had formed a confederacy of tribes and lodge, you know, big lodge cabins and all that, and we'll get to them. Uh, they were inspired by a guy named Hiawatha. That's fun to say. Most tribes were small, scattered, and nomadic, which means they went, moved around place to place following the game. Uh, they had little or no desire to manipulate nature aggressively. They lived in harmony with nature a lot of times. They just wanted to go hunt and be happy and kill animals and eat it because meat is delicious. Um, There's probably about 4 million natives north of Mexico in 1492. So that 54 million that we threw out there, 50 million of them lived outside of the United States and what is Canada. So 4 million, to give you an, a perspective, is about 1 million less of the population of Colorado today. Uh, it was not full of virgin lands. You know, there wasn't the Garden of Eden. It was manipulated. It was used by the natives. They, they burned forests to drive out game. and They did a lot of things to the environment to help themselves survive. It wasn't untouched like many Europeans and whites have written. Oh, America, untouched beauty, virgin lands. Mm. So there's a nice little map. You can see many of the tribes. Probably recognize a lot of them, and we'll be talking about a lot of the individual tribes as we go in this class. Um, talking about well, basically how they were bulldozed by whites because they were in the path of civilization. So we'll stop there for today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, the Vikings and the rival of the Europeans, the evil, evil white people. Thanks a lot, and have a good night.